Now, you know that he's Sean, and you know that I'm Andy. We've got a new guy here today. This is Ryan Yule. Host of Yule's Jewels mm -hmm. on the Lab with Leo Laporte. That's right. That's the new show by Leo. And uh, welcome. Thank you. You're a uh, local uh, Vancouverite. Born, bred, raised. And somehow you ended up on Leo's new show. It's a miracle. I don't know anything. But today, don't think of him as Ryan Yule at all. He is called Floating Gate. Ready to be floating gate? gate? I'm ready. <laughs> Floaty float. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, now we have to follow, me, follow us very carefully on this because it's a relatively complicated thing on how flash memory works. Of course, the, you know, the, it's, a, it's a technology where you're going to store information on one of these little devices, yeah. but you don't always have power, right? So in the case right. of RAM... Uh, you always have to have power to maintain any anything to maintain any information. Right. With USB keys, you take the power away after a while, and it's going to rain, you know, maintain some memory. Right, and that's why it's used for things like uh, motherboard BIOS uh, settings. It uh, it holds that information even when the power is removed. When the power is absent, but it actually uses electrons to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you exactly how that works by starting with. So I'm, we're going to call Sean our drain. I am a bit of a drain on the production sometimes. And I am the source, because it, all the goodness comes from me. You seem to have brought Brussels sprouts today, and I'm not sure that I agree with that. But okay, inside of inside of it, any uh, any uh, um, flash memory, there is a, a series of transistors, basically switches that go on and off, right? Mm -hmm. They counting either a, a state of zero or a state of one. And that's the basis right. of binary counting. So it makes sense that you would have transistors that are in either state uh, to maintain memory. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be the source and Sean's going to be the drain on the transistor. And so what happens is I'm going to send a, a current of electricity represented by uh, Brussels sprouts here All right. from the source to the drain. So we're going to plug in our uh, USB key and the, information is, and the, and the uh, electricity is going to start flowing through. It's going to start reading or writing. Mm -hmm. It's going to look like, a little bit like this. Give me something to put these in. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay, there you go. Thank there's you. A, there's a drain. Ready? Think. All right. Okay, so I'm draining this out. So kind of, this is not necessarily the most efficient drain in the whole world. Right. But you get the electricity picture. is going from one point to another. Okay. All right. So that's part number one. So it's just basically flowing at this it's point. It's flowing at that point. Okay, so we're turning the electricity on and it's flowing across the transistor. All right. Now, when it flows across the transistor from the source to the drain like that, it counts as binary zero. Okay? And zero. That's, that's the state. Now, this is zero. There's a second. Zero. Thank you. Thank you. He's going to follow along. <laughs> All right. So uh, the second, there's a second piece of the transistor, though, called, um, called a floating gate. And a floating gate is a, uh, another piece of silicon that actually can contain and hold a charge. Uh, so Ryan is our floating gate today. And he's surrounded by non-conductive material, meaning material that, just, that, cannot, uh, you know, that electrons cannot flow through. However, using a very bizarre um, physics idea called... Um, I'm trying to think of the Fowler-Nordheim tunneling, we're going to get information onto the floating gate. That sounds almost like it should be a comet or a ski team Doesn't or something. It? It's a wonderful name, Fowler-Nordheim tunneling. And what I'm going to do is, is actually, for, for a moment, I'm not going to be the source anymore. I'm actually going to be the control gate. So I'm going to fire a bunch of data at, or not a bunch of data, but a bunch of electrons at our floating gate over here, and he's going to capture it yeah, in his non-conductive material. You ready? Okay. All right, and actually, it's a little bit more violent than that, but it's... So we're going to chuck a bunch of stuff at him, and all of a sudden, he's going to... Uh, now, he's going to capture these electrons. Now, what's cool about this is that now that he has the information captured, uh, he has a different impact on the way that Sean and I interact, because, of course, we're all close together. When Sean and I pass electrons back and forth... Give me that ball, so I'll trade you. Remember, we're, remember I said we're in the state of zero. Information is flowing between the source and the drain, no problem. And when, when, when Ryan is empty, he has no impact. But now he's got electrons that are going to change the way that the current is, is flowed. So when I try to... Sh <laughs> it's actually going in there. He's blocking it, right? So he's changing the oh, nature of the electricity as it goes between the source and the drain. So when that happens, there's actually a, a cell a receptor that's actually recording the current across the transistor. Your oh. electron has wings. <laughs> well, maybe a bursal press wasn't such a good idea. But as you can, so as you can see, though, um, he gets in the way. His, he's actually holding a negative charge, and we're actually sending a positive charge. And so this, this uh, device that actually is calculating the current between the source and the drain can actually see that it's been somehow been modified. So therefore, it's counted as a 1. So 
fundamentally, that's all that there is to it. So mm. we know if the information flows there, that's a zero. If Ryan has got information on his floating gate, or uh, I should say electrons on his floating gate, he's impacting the way that that happens and that's counted mm. as a one. Yes, but certainly he can't hold on to these electrons forever. Well, he actually can't. He can because it's a non-conductive material. Now, the ah. question is, can, and when we don't run electricity between us, he can just sit there and hold, hold his package ah. of... Uh, Brussels sprouts without any and problem. that's why flash holds its memory and even when it's powered down. Now, I ever wonder, know how do you erase um, a floating gate? <laughs> yes, Andy. How do you erase a floating gate and make a mess of the apartment at the same time? Well, what you do, and we're gonna have to borrow some uh, some Brussels sprouts back from Ryan just because we don't have a, an, an ample supply. But he's gonna have some electrons in his floating gate here, no problem. Okay. So imagine that this is the same amount. Okay. So now what happens is your computer goes, okay, now I want to erase some information on the USB key. What mm -hmm. it's going to do is it's going to actually send a lot of information at the floating gate and cause him some, um, I should say, it, rather violent reactions like this, where he's going to actually going to spill everything, spill everything out. <laughs> that was and a little bit less messy than <laughs> usual. <laughs> That's right. I was, I, I'm under orders actually to keep this place clean because we don't own it. Um, so that's what happens is, is the, uh, the control gate actually fires a load of uh, electrons at the floating gate and kind of washes away anything that's there. So he goes back to his normal state again, and Sean and I resume, when we go and go read again, mm -hmm. he has no impact on the flow of information from the source to the drain. Mm -hmm. And then the process can start all over again when you start sending stuff over to him. That's right, exactly. There you go. That's how flash memory works. Do you get it? It's a really, really good um, uh, visual demonstration of this uh, at how, how stuff works. And we'll put up a URL so you can have a look at uh, what that's all about. It's a, a good animation. It kind of mm -hmm. shows you. It doesn't exactly look like three guys sitting on a bunch of chairs with a bunch of Brussels sprouts. However, <laughs> you get a bit of a more visual representation of what it really is. <laughs>